Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on calculating the Jark Barra test using Microsoft Excel. The Jark Barra test, or JB test, is typically used to test the normality of residuals when running a regression and is often used for larger sample sizes. For example, an N equal to 2000 or greater. In this Excel worksheet, I have two variables, one I've named normal and one I've named exponential. And I generated the values for these variables using SPSS, using the random numbers function. So this distribution I know follows a normal distribution, and this one I know follows an exponential distribution. So we take a look at the histogram. You can see right now it's configured for the normal distribution. And in fact, it does look more or less normal. And if I move the selection over to exponential, we can see this is an exponential distribution and is not normal. This variable is not normally distributed. I also used SPSS to conduct a Kolmogorov Smirnoff and Shapiro Wilk test with these data. And the results of those tests indicated that the normal variable was normally distributed and the exponential variable was not normally distributed. So let's see how the JB test compares to the Kolmogorov Smirnoff and the Shapiro Wilk results. First, however, I'm going to show you how I've calculated the JB test results. And to do that, I want to start with the skewness and excess kurtosis. So over here to the right, for the normal variable, I have the skewness. 0 0.018, I use the skew function for that. So the skew function and then the range A2 through A2001. So all the numeric values in column A. I did the same thing for the exponential variable for the skewness. And then the excess kurtosis is calculated using the KURT function in Excel, K-U-R-T. And did the same thing as Kurt, and then A2 through A2001. And of course, the same function for exponential except column B. Then I counted all the numeric values in column A using count, and then A colon A. That's the function to calculate the count. And of course, it's 2,000. With this information, we can calculate the JB test statistic and the p-value. And I broke this down into steps, but this can all be performed in one function. So the first step is to take the sample size, so it'll be equal to sign. I'll select L8 and divide that by 6. See, we have 333.333. For the next step, we want to first square the skewness. So I'm going to do that in parentheses. So it's going to be equal sign, open parentheses, and then the skewness value, which is L3, and then shift 6, which is the caret symbol, and then 2. So I'm going to square the skewness, then I'm going to add, I'm going to open parentheses here, the excess kurtosis squared divided by 4. And that'll give me 0 0.003. In the next step, I want to multiply the first value times the second value. So it'll just be equal sign E2 asterisk and then F2 and hit enter and it's 0 0.861. So this is the JB test statistic itself, 0 0.861. Then we want to produce the actual p value and we're going to use the chi square distribution right tail. So it's C. H-I-S-Q, 
dist.rt. That's the function we want. X is going to be the actual statistic, the JB test statistic, so 0.861. And the degrees of freedom will be equal to 2. And you can see it generates 0.65. So looking at the normal variable here and interpreting the JB test p-value, at 0.65 we would fail to reject the null hypothesis that the sample was drawn from a normal distribution. So based on this result, we would assume the variable is normally distributed. When looking at the results for the exponential variable, however, we have a statistically significant finding. This value, of course, is less than 0 0.05, which is a common value for alpha for the JB test. So we would reject the null hypothesis in this case. We'd reject the null hypothesis that these data were sampled from a normal distribution. So we'd assume that the values in the exponential variable are not normally distributed. So if we were to compare these results to the Kolmogorov Smirnoff, the uh, Kolmogorov Smirnoff statistic for this variable, the uh, p-value, was 0.2, and for the Shapiro-Wilk, it was 0.811. So in both cases, we of course would fail to reject the null hypothesis. And for the exponential variable, for both the KS test and the Shapiro-Wilk, the p-value was less than 0 0.001. So again, in those instances, we would reject the null hypothesis just as we would here using the p-value from the JB test. I hope you found this video on calculating the JB test in Excel to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.